Welcome to the Sandbox Comprehensive Player Model Guide. I'm Grodbert and today we'll be diving into aiming and shooting. This is going to be a long one, so you know the drill by now. Check for a pinned comment, download the model in the description, place it in your models folder. Let's just go, man! We are almost done with the movement, but before adding the jump, our guy can't even look around. Last episode, we looked at IK chains. Now let's learn about look at chains. Just like IK, these chains are formed by bones that are moved procedurally. But, unlike IK, where the bones arrange themselves to find a position where the end bone matches with the IK target bone, these will try to arrange themselves so that they point to a target, which will be a position in space rather than a bone, so this time we'll have to play with attachments and vectors. To make one in model doc, add a new node, search for look at chain and give it a name. Let's call it look at. We now have to add bones that will be in this chain. The order I've come to find out actually matters. It goes by decreasing influence. So first will be the head, since this is the bone that has to fully look at our target, we'll set the influence to 1. Then will be the spine bones from the top down all the way to the pelvis, but since this is a voxel character there is no spine, so we just go straight from head to pelvis. This time let's do a more subtle influence, normally moving the root bone will cause some problems with the legs, but we already have IKs set up, so they'll be fine. The look at node will require an attachment to work, so make a new attachment and call this Eyes. Obviously it's going to be parented to the head, put your character in the bind pose and the camera to the side while you place the eyes. Make sure the red line, the x-axis, is pointing forward, as this is how it will know when the chain is looking at its target. Now that it's set, we are back in the anim graph. Add the look at node. For our target we can use parameters, and to make a target with parameters, we'll need to use a vector, since it can store x, y and z coordinates. Call it aim head and use that. The weight parameter can remain empty, it's just for a 0 to 1 float so you can turn them off or blend them out. Select the chain we made earlier and as attachment use the eyes. Now the programmer will handle everything regarding where the target is placed, but we'll still need to preview our lookouts. So here's how it works. The target's starting point is your attachment, 0, 0, 0. Since you can't look inside your head, let's place it about 10 units forward by default in the parameter. Now the imaginary target is just in front of you. Start the simulation and change Y and Z with the mouse wheel. Right, left, up, down. Looks pretty good. And just like we did with the crouch blend, you can set the damping to bouncy spring. Usually the players don't like it when you mess with their aiming, but come on, this looks awesome! Now here's another cool thing you can do with the look at chains. You can stack multiple ones, for example if you have eye bones, which are quite common nowadays, you can make each eye a look at and have them follow your target. And then you can add a head look at plus hysteresis, which adds a sort of lag, or as Valve explains it, it makes it sticky. Shrimply put, it won't move until your target moves too far out of a cone of view. You can set the degrees of this imaginary cone here in the outer angle, so 15 is a 30 degrees cone of view. After that, it moves to follow the target until it is back into another cone, the inner angle. Don't set it too low or it will never stop, so something like 5. Combining these two types of chains gives you this nice effect of being followed with the eyes, only for them to turn as you leave their field of view. Now that we got looking, we can do aiming, with a gun, to kill people. So we have two ways to blend in the pose, bone masks and additives. Let's try with bone masks first. In model doc, create a weight list and name this torso. To include bones, you can move the influence slider from left to right, and anything in between for softer blends. Again, that's what we'd use for the spine, decreasing the influence for each spine bone as it goes down into the pelvis. We exclude the pelvis because we don't want to replace the motion of the work animations and I guess all that remains of the torso is the head, the arms and of course the hand eye case, different hierarchy but still arms. In anim graph, add a bone mask node and select the torso waitlist. Connect everything before the look at to the base. In model doc, add a new simple animation and select ranged underscore two eights. We'll get to why the animation is like this later. And now add a new single frame from the ranged two-handed animation. This time select frame 4, press play and wow wow wow, he got that thing on. Except he doesn't, he's not holding anything. Let's give him something here, in bone merge. Press this plus to add a model and with a magnifying glass search for the gun model I included in the files. And now he got that thing on, 
Bond merging is exactly what it sounds, it merges the bones of two models together. For example this gun, I have rigged it to the right hand bone and included it in the model. So if you bone merge the gun, it will find the right hand bone and merge it as if they were one model. This is also how clothing accessories are done, head for hats, feet for shoes or the entire torso for shorts. Things are going to get crazy as we enter advanced territory, we'll really need to pick up the pace. I'll try to be clear with instructions, but if you can't follow my words, follow my actions on the screen. Before proceeding, let's make sure we learn how to order our anagraph. From now on, I will be renaming important nodes, which you can do in the node property. I will also group nodes together, so add a new node, group, name this movement, Copy the leftmost nodes up to when the crouch is added, then enter the group with double click. Paste the nodes, and here we can connect our nodes to the outside world through these two indestructible nodes. So connect the last node to the group's output, and I guess we don't need an input for this group since it's the start of the anim graph. Select the group's input node, and in the node properties you see you can add or remove more connections. But uh, remove the only one. Copy everything after the first group up until the IK chains. Create a new group, name this rifle, paste them inside the group, connect the input onto the bone mask, and then look at into the output. Leave, move this around, and there we go. He is looking around, but he's supposed to be aiming the gun, not his head. Let's do something cheeky. Create a new attachment called gun forward. Parent it to the right hand, and then bone merge the gun in model dock and referencing frame 4 of the ranged animation in a side orthographic view, place it at the gun muzzle, remember the red arrow is forward. And now let's use that in the look at instead of the eyes, so it won't stop until the gun is pointing at our target. Now let's try and, uh, it's not moving that much, the head still does though, oh I know why, the arms follow the pelvis not the head, but it can't rotate enough or at least not as much as the head. Let's bump it to 1. Great! Oh, but now it doesn't rotate enough to the right, or at least not as much as to the left. We can see what's happening using the node preview in the bottom right. We see that the ball mask does at the gun pose, but only the arms since we excluded the pelvis, which is supposed to be turned to the right. That is corrected in the look at, where the pelvis is rotated about 30 degrees to the right, which is why we can't look that far in that direction, but a lot to the left. You can increase the limits of the look at as a quick fix, I prefer to keep both yo and pix to 90 degrees, that seems to have done the trick. Oh what's up with the knees? Let's look at the node preview. Oh ok ok, oh I see, it's the IK that keeps the feet still while the pelvis rotates, that should be a quick fix. In most engines, you can tell an IK to use the orientation of the target IK bone instead of the parent, the pelvis, that would fix it. But we don't have that in sandbox yet. I even made an issue about it. Let's add a corrective instead. Bone masking the legs to use the rotations from before the group. So go ahead and create a leg weight list in model doc. Upper leg L, R, foot IKs, and add a bone mask in anim graph. Select the leg weight list. For the base, plug in from the rifle group. And for the child, plug in from the movement group which is where we'll get the leg rotation. Now if we try, oh damn, I was so sure this would have worked, but the pelvis is the parent of the legs, if that rotates, so must the legs too. Well, not necessarily, let's talk about blend spaces. By default, you are in parent blend space, also called the local blend space in other engines, any blend is done in relation to its parent, as opposed to model blend space, where it's in relation to the model as a whole. To understand better the concept, Take this shrimple wave animation, in parent blend space, only one bone is moving, the lower arm, or in the point of view of its parent at least, and from the POV of the lower arm, its child the hand is not moving at all. But model space doesn't see parents, all it sees is two bones moving around, especially the hand. This has some niche uses for lower body stuff like lean animations or crouching, which we fixed with an IK instead. That's very cool, but how does that help? Well essentially with model space, you can ignore the parents, so we can use a mask to free some bones from the constraints of the hierarchy, or in our case, from the rotation of the pelvis. So switch over the mask blend space from parent to model space, and wazam! Oh wow it's strong! It's even ignoring the position of the pelvis, I think I saw rotations only in the list, there it is. Ok, much better. 
called his bone mask Mother Space Leg, and let's also add some documentation to this node. Programmers usually add comments in their code to help explain why they did something, and as the graph gets more complex, I don't see why we shouldn't too. You can add a comment to individual nodes up here. Let's see. Uh huh. Right, not gonna lie, I'm not digging much how the pelvis moves. And what happens if we look straight up? Oh, this cannot continue. I'm true with ball masks. Let's try with additives instead. Let's go in model doc. You can notice that the ranged pose has a different stance. The legs are splayed out and the body points to the right. All stuff that was lost when just ball masking the arms. So add an anim subtract to it and choose to subtract the idol. Now in the anim graph rifle group, delete the arms bone mask and substitute it with an add node. Preview and okay. Seems like everything went right. Oh wow, come on. Okay, a lot of things are going on. Let's see the node preview. I guess the arms move back and forth in the walk animation. Oh, I see. The look at is managing to keep the gun straight. Right, where to even start? You know, I think I want the left arm to be kept on the gun at all times. Of course, this means we'll use an IK chain, so head over to model doc and create one. Name it hand underscore L, last bone hand L, change the target to not the left hand IK, but to a quaint little bone called hand L to R. As the name implies, this is a bone that makes the left hand follow the right hand, it is a child of the right hand, so in the animation, you can place it wherever the left hand will go on a two-handed weapon, and then use an IK to keep the left hand parented to the right. It is in the same hierarchy, but as the IK chain is only two bones long, it doesn't create a loop. Now in Animgraph, create a new solve IK chain and select our hand L chain. Call this node hand L to R, so we don't confuse it with the feet IK. There we go. This is pretty commonly done in games, even Team Fortress 2 has it, Except here apparently, where they forgot to add it. Wait a minute. I kinda like how the breathing layer is added on top of everything. Let's do that too. Our idle animation is in the 2D blend, but we'll only need a pause now. So in model doc, you can trim the animation frames with this double slider. Pull the right handle all the way to zero to make it a single frame pause. You can also add frame holds by pressing these little H to keep a frame for longer, or even to turn a pause into an animation. For example, when you want to blend a pause with an animation, since even the 2D blend struggles with it, the little steps are back. Both run and walk are 32 frames, so hold the idols frame 0 for 32 frames, and now that they last the same, it blends even better than before. As for adding the breathing, we already have an idol delta, so make it loop, add it before the hand I case, tear. That looks more lively. Actually, let's make this a group too. But still, let's mask out the movement of the arms when walking. Add a bone mask and select the torso weight list. Use the walk gun additive as the base and we'll mask in the arms from the single frame pose so they stand still. Alright, it's a delta animation of the idol. Let's just quickly add it on top of an idol single frame. Use that for the arm mask, rename it to arm mask. Start et voila. Okay, okay, next up are the legs. They are suddenly snapping which is when the limit of the chain is reached. This is happening because the gun pose has the legs splayed out more, which is fine when standing still, but since it's added on top, as soon as you start walking, it breaks. I want to keep the cool pose, so let's blend the legs out gradually as you pick up speed. Go in the rifle group and create a bone mask using the legs weight list, and call this leg stance mask. For the base, we'll obviously use everything up until now, as for the child, we'll replace it with everything from before all of this mess, so connect a group input into the child. If we start, we see that the legs don't snap anymore, but they're also not in the cool pose when standing still, so let's instead slowly blend the pose out as you get faster, with a 1D blend, so create one. As for the blend source, we won't use a parameter, we only have either move X or Y, but we need to use the speed you're moving, usually you can add a third wish speed parameter, and let the programmer set the velocity here, but we can skip that and use our root motion speed as the blend source. Make sure we add a comment to explain this. Now add two inputs, call the first one stance and the second walk. Set 38 as the value, that's how fast the walk is, and now connect the look at to the stance input and the mask to the walk input as the stance gets masked out while walking. You may think using a 1D blend here is a bad idea, with the whole matching time frame thing, 
but actually we are blending between walking and the walking with a bone mask, so there is no mismatched timing issue. If we start, we can see that as the walk gets faster, the pose is blended out and the legs don't snap anymore. We're almost done, but there's one last problem. Look at chains are really bad for looking straight up and down. You have three ways to mitigate this. Stack multiple chains for the head, arms and spine. Not allow the players to look straight up or down. Or my favorite, use an aim matrix, wherein you do a pause for every direction your character can look, so you can have great look up and down poses. This is why the ranged two-handed animation is so messed up. Every frame is 45 degrees of another look direction. The order of these frames is very important. It starts down left, goes middle, right, then middle left to right, up to right and finally straight up and straight down. Don't worry, because if you add an aim matrix node in the rifle group, the node itself tells you the order. Target will use parameter of course, set aim head, set gun forward as the attachment, blend node additive, Blah. Seems this node uses either bone masks or additives, which means we'll need a delta animation. Admittedly, we already have one, but this is something we're going to add on top of the pose, which means copy and paste the ranged animation, add matrix in the name, and change the target animation to itself. If that was all, we could have used a linear delta, but we're not using the first frame this time, we want to use the frame where it's aiming in the middle, the neutral pose, that will be frame number 4. Now change the sequence to this new matrix animation, check the can look straight down box, and plug it where the look cut would be, and if you play it, yes! Such awesome dynamic poses, whoever made this animation is really talented. Although he didn't predict one thing, for the exception of straight up and down, the animation only covers at most 45 degrees increments, he didn't take into account that, when running left, your torso rotates more than 45 degrees, making aiming straight impossible. This is the same issue we had earlier, but this time we can't just bump up the limit. It's at times like this that we could really use our regular look at, which has no inherent limit. Oh wait, we can! I hope you didn't delete it, because we can just plug it after the matrix as a failsafe to give it that last push when it can't quite keep the aim straight. And finally, our gun is properly blended onto our movement. And I mean, proper. This is a real piece of work. It only took... Uh, it only took read time for real this time. Oh wow, I guess we'll need to cut it here. Tune in next episode for a deep dive on Aningraph's most useful node, the state machine. And what the heck are tags? <laughs>